So, over the next couple of years, what we're going to do is we're going to hit scale. So at Slant3D, when we originally started, the goal was to be competitive with injection molding. We hit that goal a couple of years ago, where we were cheaper, became cheaper than injection molding on average up to about 100,000 parts, depending on the design. But now, what's the next thing for us? What is it that we're pushing towards? Well, ultimately, we want manufacturing to be free, where nothing ever exists until somebody actually buys it and then it's grown on demand and delivered to the customer. That way there's never any inventory. But in order to hit that, there's some steps in between that we have to go through. So we hit that scale already of being competitive with injection molding, but that's with thousands of parts at a time. We now want to invert that and basically pull it back to the goal that 3D printing always had, which was to make that one part on demand. That is exceptionally difficult though, to, because while there are many large print farms out there in the world right now. Most of them are focused on a very few products. 3D printing, even though it can make anything, it doesn't make everything reliably. So in order to get to that point where one brand new single unique item can be produced and delivered reliably on the first try is a very big challenge. So in order to actually hit that, there's a few things that we have to do. While our facilities have been built for mass production so that we can produce thousands of parts, we now need to focus on that flexibility and the reliability at those very low, low volumes. So we will be working on our new machines. We are deploying version 13 right now, which is a, a new, whole new generation of machine from the previous 12 iterations that we created. Uh, that will improve our reliability and also improve our automation. The automation we are going to continue to build out. Right now we have our production software, which we design and develop ourselves, which allows us to run very efficiently compared to most print farms. Um, but then we are also going to be building out more robots within our factories that are able to trundle up and down the rows, pull parts, track parts, and track the machinery itself to make sure that it's running continuously without having to have a bunch of labor. That is something we solved very early on in the company, but it's something that we continue to optimize to reduce the number of people that are needed inside of a facility so that it can be literally like a, a data center where you have one guy taking care of thousands of servers. We wanna have one guy taking care of thousands of 3D printers. Secondly, in order to hit that capability, we have to get more control of our supply. Since the 3D printing filament market and many of the suppliers within the industry are focused on kind of consumer-based customers, there's a high level of variability in that. So the color of black may change between one batch and another. While a person in a garage with a hobby machine won't notice that one spool of black is different from another spool, when we have thousands of parts lined up side by side, we really notice. So we, over the next years, we will be pushing really hard to control that supply, refine that supply, and partner with suppliers who can reliably give us good quality material and again, reduce the error rate. Because if we want one guy in a facility of thousands of machines, we have to have exceptionally few errors in the filament that is being produced. There cannot be blobs, there cannot be contamination or variation on that scale, which is thousands of kilograms used up every day that can have very few errors. Next, we actually need the products to produce. So we will be working very closely with designers around the world to create products that can be sold to the average consumer and loved and enjoyed so that they can appreciate 3D printed products and the advantages that they give to us. The problem is, is that not very many people really understand how to design for 3D printing or 3D printing production specifically. So we're gonna to try to build out more educational resources as well as finding those designers that are already good at it and promoting them and helping them to be successful and bring their products to market so that as many new products can be created as possible. Our internal design teams will also be working to build new products because we have a huge amount of expertise in how to make manufacturable 3D printed products. So we will continue to expand that through our angled marketplace with partnerships and internal product design. And lastly, we just need more factories. Right now, our primary factory is in Boise, Idaho. It is specced for 3,000 3D printers uh, over the next few months that we're building it out. We need more. 
We are planning uh, several other factories throughout the United States, and we want to eventually expand internationally just as quickly as possible so that the fulfillment capability is present so that when a product becomes popular and needs to be produced everywhere all at once, we are able to produce and meet that demand so that there is never a need to transition to injection molding. We want to eliminate that second step. So if we have enough fulfillment centers and large 3D printing farms throughout the world to meet that demand, there's no longer the need to transition from a 3D printed prototype to an injection molded real design. 3D printing is the end all and the final design. So that is the ultimate goal. We are going to refine our processes, get control of the supply chain as much as possible to make sure that we are creating reliable, high quality products and then just expanding our capacity and our scale as much as possible to meet the demand and make sure we're able to support the new products as they are created. So that is our operating goal over the next several years. Make it as low cost as possible to produce a product and point towards the goal of making it possible to produce a product for free.